Hi, this is Todd with EsotericCarCare.com. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Leatherique system of leather products. All right, today we're looking at Leatherique. This is a two-part system where you have a conditioner and a cleaner. Um, this is a product that's been around for a long time. The company was founded back in 1968. The owner of the company has been heavily involved in leather uh, technologies throughout the years. And if anybody out there in the world knows leather and leather care, it is Leatherique. Um, I have been using this product since my early days in the business. I have tested a lot of different uh, uh, products out there for leather uh, maintaining and leather restoration. Nothing has ever come close to the performance that you get out of this. It's not a, a quick fix or a quick cleaner on something. It is a product that takes time. Uh, the two-part process, the first part you put on the leather, let it set for 24 to 48 hours. The second part you come in, you clean up uh, all the residue with it, uh, and then it's complete at that time. So if it's something that you're looking to do in a hurry, Leatherique is not for you. But if you have the time to invest and you want to do a really deep cleaning and conditioning, then Leatherique is the way to go. I want to talk about uh, the product uh, first. We're going to do this video a little bit different. We're going to talk about it here uh, out in um, the, uh, the studio part. Then we're going to go out in the shop and we're going to show you how to use the product properly on a, a, an Audi seat that we've got back there. But with it, you've got two different products. You've got the Rejuvenator and you've got the Pristine Clean. And this works a little bit differently than what you may think. You may think that you're going to clean a seat first and then condition it. But with Leatherique, you condition it first, then you use the cleaner. Then the cleaner, you can use this as your maintenance product. Uh, every couple of months, you want to do a quick touch up on it. The Pristine Clean works great for that. Uh, and a couple of myths that I want to talk about for just a moment is a big misunderstanding, uh, especially you look out there on the internet and you look at uh, car care information about leather. Um, the big argument against this is leather is waterproof. Uh, with newer types of leather that's been around last 20 or 30 years, it has a coating on top, therefore this product will never get down in the surface. Well, that is actually false. Leather is water resistant. All you got to do is take a piece of leather, take a coffee cup that's got uh, some coffee around the bottom, sit on it, uh, and then pull it off uh, tomorrow. Try to clean that, and you're going to see that stain down inside. Also, if you've ever left your windows open in your car and it rains on it, you'll notice that the leather gets hard. That has actually gotten down into the leather, which is why the rejuvenator takes time to soak down into the surface of the leather to allow it to um, deeply condition that leather and draw out all the dirt that may be in there. Um, another thing is this used to be called rejuvenator oil. So people out there would argue against it, say it's an oil-based product and therefore it's not going to get inside the leather. Well, here at Esoteric, we draw our conclusions by using products and testing them. Uh, basing a theory off of a name isn't really scientific uh, in our book. It is not an oil, it is a water-based product. It's going to get down into uh, the leather and do a great job of conditioning it. Uh, another one I've seen uh, in areas or, or people try to do uh, um, how-tos on Leatherick online, and they'll talk about wrapping it in a plastic bag or a garbage bag to generate a little bit more heat. Well, you can use that if you're going to move a car inside and out. One of uh, the parts of the instructions on Leatherick's website says that you can put the car outside with the windows up and you get a bit of a steam room effect. Uh, all that heat, it, it helps um, open up the pores of the leather so this gets in a little bit quicker. Well, you can put that plastic bag on the seat just to drive it outside because otherwise you sit in it and you get covered in Leatherick but make sure and pull that back off because what can potentially happen is you've got little ink codes that you're gonna find on plastic bags. If you let it set there, that ink can transfer to the leather and I've seen it get deep enough down into it that you have to have the seat re-dyed to uh, get to um, do away with it. So make sure if you're putting a bag on there, move the car outside, take the bag off, 
don't let it sit on the surface. You want to make sure that you're using it the right way. Um, one of the big ways that we use this is when we're trying to take an older car, older leather, and bring some life back to it. You can just tell by feeling leather uh, if it needs deep conditioning, and that will call leather preservation. I've seen old cars where they start to deteriorate, they start to get hard. We do a couple of applications of Leatherique that's gonna bring a lot of softness right back to it. Or even if it's a car that's not that old, you'll be amazed when you use this properly how much of a difference it's going to make in that leather. We use this on brand new cars uh, as well to start them off properly. If you have a convertible car, I've seen a lot of people with convertibles with black interiors where they think that their leather is clean. Um, a, a convertible brings a lot of dirt and debris into it, clogs up uh, the leather surfa surface, and you can bring a lot of it out by using this. We use a bucket to clean in between uh, these processes and you quickly find out how dirty leather is once you start rinsing out your rag from the Prestine Clean into that bucket. You can be amazed at how dirty your leather actually is um, once you use this. Uh, another thing with, uh, with Leather Eek once, uh, once you're cleaning it is that, like I said, the, the Prestine Clean you're going to use this as a follow-up to it. Once you do the two-part system, you come back, you use uh, the Prestine Clean from time to time uh, as a maintenance product. I think we've covered just about all the aspects of it here uh, in uh, the, the store side. So now we're going to go out in the shop and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how to use this the proper way. Okay, now we're out in the shop. We want to go over how we work with Leatherique on the seats. As you can see on this one, it is very dirty. But if you don't have a, um, a, a light colored seat like this that you can easily see the dirt on it, one easy way to tell is if you've got black seats or darker seats, typically on the bolsters, you're gonna see that's got a shiny look to it. Whereas the rest of the surface might be more of a matte finish. That matte finish is the natural uh, state of leather. Once you get that shininess in there, that's showing that dirt and oils and sweat and everything have gotten down into the surface of the leather. All that needs to be cleaned out. Uh, with uh, this one right here, we took it out of the car just so it's easier to show you how you do the process. Obviously, it's not necessary to do it all the time. When we're doing it, we make sure that we have our rejuvenator, a couple of towels, and this one, which is most important to me, the guys have been giving me a hard time because seven to eight years ago, I wrote an article about Leather Eek. I had a Cool Whip container in there for keeping my applicators and all. Uh, since then, we still have the Cool Whip jar around here. You can use, obviously, whatever kind of container that you want uh, to put the Leather Eek in. We just like this one. So when we're getting ready uh, to do this, we want to clean off all the heavy debris first. So either take a vacuum, clean out all the cracks and crevices, or we use compressed air, blow it out. Gets all the you know sediments that are just sitting on the chair. You wanna get that out of there. Next, we're gonna take, we've got terry cloth applicator. We're just gonna put our leather eek rejuvenator in our container. We're gonna be liberal with how much goes on it. And then I'm just gonna thoroughly work it into the surface. And don't be afraid that you're using too much. You really can't use too much when it comes to this process of it. Now, after we have everything completely coated, we're gonna use the palms of our hands to work it in the surface. What that, that does, is that helps warm up the surface and helps get it into the pores of the leather as opposed to just sitting on the surface. So literally, I'll work it and then around any kind of stitching, I'll make sure to work it really hard. So you're gonna do that on the entire surface of the seats. And one of the things you wanna have a towel around for, you have your plastic siding or any trim that may uh, be with the, the seat that you're gonna put it on, 
after you put all your Leatherik on it, you're gonna want to make sure that you wipe everything off. Chances are Leatherik is not gonna damage any plastic or whatever, but no reason in uh, taking any kind of risk on that. So after that you go through the whole process, make sure you wipe everything off completely. Leatherik is safe on all kinds of leathers, ages, doesn't really matter. The biggest thing that you want to watch out for is whether the seats have been redyed at one point. Usually you can tell that it's gonna have a different color, it's gonna have a different look to it than the rest of the seat. Or a lot of times, if the seat came with white stitching, and like on this gray seat, for instance, if I look and I've got an area of the stitching that looks gray, chances are it's been dyed right there. If that re dye job wasn't a very good one, as this soaks in and you go through the removal process in a couple of days, you could potentially take some of that dye with you. Um, in those cases, if you have an older seat like this that really needs some help, um, you should be prepared to have a re-dye anyhow, because a lot of times these areas have been damaged. You'll get the bolsters that are actually worn through. You can find somebody good in your area that can actually um, get that repaired well for you and then go and finish off the whole seat. Now, what we're gonna do is we'll continue on to cover the entire seat. We'll be very liberal and generous with how much that we're using because the more it's on there, the more that it could actually soak uh, down inside. Then we're gonna let this sit a day or two. We're gonna come back and we're gonna add some more product as we watch uh, how it soaks into the surface. And then finally we do our removal. So I'm gonna continue on coating the rest of the seat right here, and then I'll see you back in about 24 hours. We'll go over it and see how much more we need to put on the surface based on how much it's soaked up. Okay, now it's the next morning. We've let our leathery sit on the seat overnight, and we wanna come back and take a look at it to see if we need to add more. In a case like this, when the, the seat is this dirty, this old, this neglected, you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna to have to add more to it. How do you know whether you need to add more? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, if you take a look at the finish, especially right at first when you put it on, it's gonna have a lot of shine to it. You're gonna see the product sitting on top of the surface. When you come back, sometimes even after a couple of hours, you can look, particularly in the high wear areas, you're gonna see that there's no more shine there. That just means that the product has soaked into the leather. So take a look at your seats after you've done it. If you see some patchy areas where it doesn't have the shine to it, go back in, add more product, just like we did the first time around. And we'll even take a look at it every two or three hours and see if it needs more. And we'll keep adding as necessary. If it's something a little bit older, we may add three, four, five times um, going back over it just to make sure that we're getting enough product on it. And once you finally see a real uniform finish after it's been sitting a while, you know that it's gotten enough on the seats. Now, if you're dealing with something newer, one, maybe two, uh, all you need, but if you're doing leather preservation or you're trying to restore some old leather, you wanna make sure that you get plenty on it the first time. So in this case, we're gonna go back and we're gonna add some more to it. Uh, we'll check it in a couple hours, add more if necessary, and then we'll come back into the shop tomorrow and we'll start working on the removal process. Okay, now we've let uh, the leather reek sit on the seat for a couple of days now. I said most of the time, if you're dealing with a uh, seat or leather that's not that bad, just allowing to sit overnight will suffice. But we knew for this Audi S6, it was very, very dirty. So giving a little bit more time to sit on the surface allows it to soak in. What we've done is we've went ahead and pre-cleaned one section of the seat right here, just so you can see the before and after difference uh, as it sits on here. It's amazing how much it cleaned up, actually cleaned up uh, a bit more than we thought it may with, uh, with the bad condition it was in. Also, the leather is a lot softer now too. And with Leatherique, after you use it, it continues to soften up for about two or three weeks uh, afterwards. So now that we're getting ready to do the removal on this, there's just a couple of things we need. We need a couple of uh, towels, uh, we need our pristine clean, and what we do is we just put a spray head on top of the bottle. It makes it a lot easier to uh, to get it out. Um, and then for application, I like to use a uh, terry cloth, same terry cloth applicator we use for the rejuvenator section. Uh, and then if you're dealing with something very dirty like this, you can get yourself a leather brush um, because typically it's going to need a little bit more agitation to get it off. Whereas if you're working with 
one that's not that dirty, just using your uh, towel is going to be enough to get it. And one other way that we can use for detailers that have uh, the, the uh, Nano Hybrid from Rupus, this comes with an attachment for upholstery. We can use that to get the nasty stuff off uh, as well. So first things first, we want to put the Prestine Clean right on the surface. There's a couple ways you can do it. In this case, the seat is out. I can spray it right on it. I'm not worried about overspray, but when it's in the car, you don't want to get overspray uh, on everything else that you have to clean up. So an easy way to do this is just spray it right into your applicator. Be pretty liberal with it. And then you're going to work it into the surface where the rejuvenator is still sitting. And you want to let that sit for a couple of minutes, preferably. It just allows it to break down the rejuvenator. Uh, once you take a look at the finish and you feel it, after the rejuvenator is set for a day or two, it will have kind of a sticky consistency. What that is, that's all the dirt, sweat, oils, everything else that's been pushed out of the leather. And it's now sitting on top. The Pristine Clean cleans all that with the dirt uh, off with it. So also, I said you can spray it right on the surface, let it soak in. Here, I'll work it in. Then, once I've done cleaning all that, I'm gonna want to rinse this out. I've got a bucket of warm water here. You're gonna wanna rinse that out on occasion. And I have got a wet towel that I'm gonna go back over it to get all the remaining residue off. Typically, I'm gonna wait until I've done the entire chair here, but just to show you how the process works, and if it still feels a little bit slick, just rinse it out. Go over it again. And then once you've done that, you can take a nice dry towel and just lightly buff that finish. And you can see it's cleaned it up considerably. So when you're going over it, just remember, pristine clean, get it on the surface, take your wet towel, wipe it off. If it's really dirty like this, you're gonna wanna rinse it out, do a secondary wipe on it, and continue that with the whole seat. Then come back with a dry towel, lightly buff it off. And speaking of your water bucket, if you're dealing with seats like this, this bucket is gonna get really dirty, really nasty, really quick. So instead of taking dirty water and putting that onto the next seat, I would recommend rinsing it out between seats just so you're dealing with clean water uh, all the time. Uh, and when you have old worn leather like this, it's got a lot of cracking in it. There's dirt embedded down in there that by using a leather brush, you can get most of that out, but remember, after you clean it up, you're still gonna see a lot of those cracks because you are looking at that. You're looking at a crack in the leather, not d dirt sitting on the surface, but still it's gonna look a lot better than, uh, than what it was. So now that we've gone through this whole process, we're gonna continue on with the rest of the seat here, get it all finished up, and we're gonna show you some direct before and after shots of it so you can see just how much difference this goes through. Uh, one more note is if you're dealing with an old seat that's gotten pretty hard over time and you're working on preservation or restoration, go through this process, let it, um, let it continue to soften up over two, three week period, and then maybe a month later, come back, do it again, uh, and that will help restore uh, those seats, make them soft once, uh, once again. After it's all done, we wanna come back every few months or so and maintain it. We can just take a little Prestine Clean, spray it right onto a towel or applicator, wipe it in, let it set for a minute, buff it off. If you get a lot on there, use a little bit of a damp rag uh, to buff it off, then hit it with your dry towel, and that's all you need. So let's take a look at some before and after uh, shots of the seats, then we'll go back into the studio, uh, have some final thoughts on the leathery process.
Okay, now we're done in the shop. Hopefully you got a better idea of how to get the most out of Leatherique. Um, and hopefully it dispelled some of the myths that you may have read out there on the internet about what it is, how to use it, how to get the most out of it. Leatherique system is available in two different sizes on our website. The smaller size for average consumer, this is more than enough to do it a couple of times a year if you'd like. If you're a detailer, you probably wanna step up to the bigger size. While you're on there, if you wanna learn some more information about it, be sure to read other people's reviews that they have left behind. Don't just take my word on how good it is. Uh, and if you've got some feedback you'd like to leave, be sure to leave a review as well. Also make sure that you go to our YouTube channel, learn more about Highline detailing products, tools, and techniques. We're constantly updating and uploading new material on there. Uh, so for Leatherique, EsotericCarCare.com, I'm Todd Cooperrider. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.